I'm not worried about the emergency drains because that really should never, you know, that's just for code and oh, that's right. going to be the exception. So, oh, right. so, so oh, well, you're, you're using roof drains that go into the ground then for the roofs. Uh, those roof drains go into the, into, um, into a down spot and that down, those down spots distribute along the side of the house inside the, the, the walls and they discharge to the site. Oh, so, so they are discharging to the site, not to the um, underground? Not to the underground, no, because we don't have, here where we have swells, we don't have exfiltration okay. trains. Okay, so now if you go to drawing C1, as, um, one second. let's go to C1, which is your grading yes, plan. Let me, let me open it. Okay, one is, in talking to these roof drains, you have a lot of holes. You have, you know, you show the grading really great in in rectangles and boxes, but you don't show any grading in between these boxes. So it is critical that where you have these roof drains, you want to make sure that it drains to a low point. So Blue roll call. And then I'll, I'm going to move pretty quickly through this meeting, especially the first few items. Go ahead. And go through. Okay. <clears throat> we call this meeting to order um, July 25th, 2022, at 5.43, the Budget and Finance Committee meeting. Um, roll call, Danny Montana. Present. Jay Miller. Present. Angel Bentecourt. Present. You have a quorum. So good evening, everyone. It's nice to be here with everybody. So thank you so much for, for being on today. Um, you see right now the agenda. We're going to go, to, I'm going to go rather quickly just to show a couple things. And then I'm going to, um, one of the items that we're going to be discussing before we get into budget recommendations is I'm going to do an oversight or an overview um, really quickly of the uh, latest CIP. And I'm going to ask Jackie, because Jackie's been the one updating it, I'm going to ask her to help me with that presentation, if it's okay with you, Jackie. I'm assuming yes. Okay, so let's start with um, the items at hand that I have here. All right, so authorized positions. Uh, just to give you an update, there hasn't been much of uh, some, uh, not much of a change in personnel. Uh, I'll give you some of the bigger ones that happened and I have them all written right here and I'll start here with uh, police department. Police department was, we cut two positions. One was a part-time position police officer and a full-time po police position. So those, uh, so technically a full-time, one full-time and one part-time position has been eliminated from the police department. Other than that, code enforcement, one, uh, we used to have three code officers. Excuse me? Oh, okay. Um, we used to have three code officers. Now we've one has retired, and since retiring, we have decided not to fill it. We think with technology that we currently have, and with the staff that our veteran code officers, many years on staff with us, we believe that with two we can cover the entire city. So those are those are two departments or divisions and departments that have um, that have changed personnel. Uh, another couple departments um, that have also changed. Um, is the uh, building maintenance? No, which one was it? Streets. Streets did change, and that is because of the maintenance of the new parking garage. So because of the new parking garage, we need a one full-time person to handle. That garage is open 365 days out of the year, and it's an, a 24-hour, 24 25 hours sometimes even, feels like it, but it's a 24-hour operation. So because there's so much movement and we want to make sure we maintain it first class, we have somebody that's designated just to the, the garage to make sure that they paint. When If there's graffiti, they pick up if there's anybody that litters, making sure the stairwells are clean and accessible and making sure that the elevator is also accessible and clean for all our people to use. We want to make sure that everybody feels comfortable going and parking in the garage. Um, aside from that, parks and recreations, they've also eliminated uh, a part-time and also and filled it with a full-time. That's why you don't see a change in personnel, but they, they, uh, they've also, because of the tennis center, which I'm, here it is, tennis center, 
So the tennis center, we used to have a part-time, they've eliminated one of the part-time positions and they've added a full-time rec leader there. So that's one of the things that you, you see as a, a little different. Other than that, that's pretty much our personnel change. Um, all, because of the union agreements that we have with ASME, um, everybody that's in union is going to get a 2.5 merit increase. Plus next year's COLA has already been set at 4.4%. So those are things that are related to personnel. Any, uh, any questions on that? No questions. No. Okay. No question. All right, perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. So let's talk about the next item, which is basically tennis and pool. I know that we, we, we touched upon it at the last meeting. There's something that I worked with, matter of fact, with, with Jay with Miller on this, and we were talking about how we can make this report even more useful um, to the individuals that are actually making decisions and recommendations to the budget and finance, com uh, to the uh, city commission. So one of the things, and maybe Jay, you wanna speak about this. One of the things that we've uh, incorporated is an additional line which is the actuals line. You wanna talk about it a little bit? Yeah, yeah, just, just briefly, which is as we were comparing these budgets, we were looking for actual for 20, we were looking at actual 1920, actual 2021. Then we were looking at budget 21, 22, and then an estimate and you're like, where are they getting these numbers from? And then a proposed of 171. So I thought it'd be good for us to have a column that gives us where we are roughly year to date closest quarter let's say so what this is is you're looking at three quarters of the year have gone by and the top line salary is regular they've only expected they've only in, expended ninety seven thousand dollars yet they're asking for one hundred seventy one thousand dollars as a proposed budget and so if you remember we asked them some questions about why that was and uh you know and they answered it accordingly but at least this way we sort of understand what a what a large jump we're talking about so that was it. And, and exactly, it, it kind of puts it in perspective. You know that 96, 75%, so there's 25% remaining. Uh, and especially when especially when, when the director of parks was basically saying, well, we don't always spend that amount of money. We have to budget for it just in case. Right. It gives you a better, better picture of it. Um, so moving forward, I think what we'll do is we're going to incorporate this. And it, it's not always going to be 75 because when you first see these worksheets, it's not at 75. We're probably at the 50% mark of the fiscal year. That's right. So we may, it just so happens when I produce this, we already had 75% of the year completed and accounted for. Um, we, we will probably provide this at the 50% mark, which makes it a little bit even easier to do the math, at least in your head, um, of where we, are, we should end up. Um, and is it close to the estimates that are being provided? And then you can compare truly with what's being proposed. Maybe it's a little too much compared to this year or it's too little, who knows? So I just wanted to bring that to attention. I, I think it's a great idea. So I appreciate it, Jay. Thank you so much. Um, I, I believe next year, that's what we're going forward. Just doing that, having this worksheet just like this. Yeah, thanks Alfred, I appreciate it. Nobody else may no, like no, it, I but I do. Thank you. <laughs> okay, perfect. All right, so we're good. Any questions on this before I move on? No. Okay, so with uh, the last uh, item before I bring in CIP so that we can just talk about that is at the last meeting, there was a discussion in reference to, okay, yeah, 4.3, I get it. You know, um, what does that mean if we go to 3.99? What is the comparison in the difference? Remember there was a discussion of that? So I wanted to provide this sheet just to give you an idea at 4.33, based on the average homestead property, which is set by property appraiser, not by me or anything. We just use that number every year of changes. You could see from 2021 to now, it's increased significantly. Um, and hopefully the property values continue to increase. I don't see it any slowing down anytime soon. So that's what the average homestead property owner's value, tax value is in the city of South Miami. So if you did at 4.33, leaving it exactly how it is in this fiscal year, 2022, you see that the average homeowner would be paying about 162 bucks more. Now, taking that into account, if we actually apply the 3.99, which was adopted at the last regular commission meeting, you see that the person or the homeowner would be paying $103 instead of 162. So you see the difference between 4.33 and the difference between 
uh, 3.99, it's basically $59 on average. That's all I was doing. And I, next time I'm going to provide this sheet at, as part of one of the, uh, the agenda items when I do this budget and finance for the next coming year, because I think it is useful. Um, and maybe we can apply, you know, roll back. And it's an Excel spreadsheet that I think I could supply to everybody. They could plug in their own numbers and, you know, play around with it. So I find it useful. So basically, if we would have left it the same, it would have been 162. If, since we went to 3.99, it's going to be 103, which is a savings to our taxpayers on average of about 59 bucks. So, Alfredo, this is, <laughs> I got some interesting uh, uh, email on this, uh, on this subject of this millage rollback or whatever, right? And uh, I thought was, what was fascinating is that the commission approved the reduction in millage before seeing and approving the actual budget that we need. So I get it that they know that we have more money coming in because we know our tax assessed values went up. And so I get that piece, but it strikes me as sort of odd that they would approve something giving money back before they've heard from the, from the, on the budget side that we don't have some costs that really need to be handled. It, it, am I looking at that the wrong way? Uh, no, you are correct. I, but however, I must add that I'm going to say that the manager is constantly having budget discussions with the commission on the side. And right. I'm also going to assume that many of them are watching at each and every one of these budget and finance meetings. Yeah. Okay. So even if they're not here presently with you and they may not even watch it today, but these yeah. recordings will live on forever. And uh, yeah. at their leisure, they're able to look at it and see where what's being discussed between us as a committee or your, your committee and me as a liaison. Um, and and get a and and get a gauge of where we are, and at yeah. the same time there are closed door meetings with the manager at all times. So our commission has a great communication line with the with the city manager. Yeah. Okay. So um, yes, you're right. They have not seen the draft. They're going to see the draft coming this week because by charter we have to supply it to them uh, thirty some days before thirty one days I think it is uh, before actual the first hearing. So we'll be finalizing the budget this week and sending it to them for in preparation for the budget workshop that's coming on August 4th. Okay. I, I you know, so, uh, and I don't, you know, look, I think there's all sorts of ways to communicate things, but uh, would it be, it probably would be, wouldn't be popular <laughs> if we decided that in our comments to the, in the budget workshop that we find that, we found that to be an oddity. <laughs> It's, you can actually make that uh, it probably would guarantee you don't have to deal with me on the board anymore. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, hey, listen, I think that's a valid, that's a valid, uh, a valid point. I think it's a, a, it's a valid point to saying, you know, before adopting the actual millage, maybe a, a, a recommendation would be that you receive the draft prior to that reading of that resolution. Yeah. I mean, because the reality is, you know, it's going to be a month and a half from that meeting where they did well a month at least between that meeting that they did it and the meeting we're going to have in august things change right yeah. you know and so otherwise anyway it just seems like it's jumping the gun i would adopt it just because i think it looks like better government right 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 and i, I think many people actually uh voted with based on that saying hey look our assessed values are extreme you know there's inflation coming let's let's provide some relief to our taxpayers you know i think yeah. that's what i think a few people mentioned that on that date, um, yeah. of which received unanimous approval by our commission. Yeah, yeah, well, I, they're all running. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, you're right. I, I, have a, I have a couple of questions. Um, yeah. Okay, this millage reduction, that's a done deal, right? It's, that's, it's been voted on, right? Well, let me, let me tell that's a great, great question. So let me explain, um, because I've had to, time. I've had to explain this to a couple people before, uh, after the vote. 3.99 is what's going to be advertised on the trim notice, uh -huh. which comes out in mid-August. Now, at the hearings, which take place in September, the commission can lower it even further by a vote of a majority. However, if at that meeting, for some odd reason, somebody says, oh, I want to make it 4.1, which is greater than what's being advertised, they can, they can make that motion. And if it gets a majority vote, then the budget hearing stops, that process stops. And 
we are required by Florida statute to send a, a letter first class with specific language explaining that the mayor and commission is choosing to exceed the advertised millage rate of 3.99 and uh, planning on adopting at this specific hearing a millage of XYZ, 4.1, you know, anything greater than 3.9. Let's just it, 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 it's as it occurred in the past. I mean, Miami has been around for a long time. Have I ever seen it in my 20 some odd years of being? I've never seen it happen that way. In other words, what they normally adopt um, and advertise is the highest that is uh, provided to the residents at that time. But they could go higher. It would just it would be administratively challenging, to say the least. Okay. My second question is how, how um, my fellow committee members feel about the redu millage reduction. If I may ask Jay and Angel what they feel about this, how they feel if it was it should have stayed the same, or or is it or is it better to reduce? That was a question to. Jane Angel. Can I real quick before you gave your response? Let me just because I did speak to committee member um, uh, Kaye about this, and his and one of the things he's going to be making a recommendation of for consideration of this committee is to maintain it at three point nine nine, not go any lower. That's that's what he's he's recommending um, as as a committee member. So I just wanted to voice that because I did speak to him specifically about okay. that. Okay, thank you. Okay. So he's he's essentially what he's saying is don't get carried away in your September meeting and lower it more. Correct. He's going to be recommending that that the committee support his recommendation and telling them, you know, keep it at three point nine nine. It's a great seven percent or six point nine eight percent reduction from our current millage, which is much greater than he read the same article that all of us read that was in the Miami Herald where the property appraiser and one of our county commissioners was saying, well, we should go back to three percent. Miami Dade County just adopted a resolution that reduced the millage 1%. So he says, you know, we didn't just go to the 3% that property appraiser recommended in some county commissioners or one county commissioner, at least that ever comes to mind, Raquel uh, Regalado. Uh, but we doubled that more than, you know, more than doubled it. We went, we exceeded the three, uh, we went to 6.98, almost 7%. So that's why, that's his logic. His logic is, you know, we've, we've reduced it a good amount, a substantial amount. Um, so he's not in favor of reducing it anymore. And, how uh, much? How much of the millage reduction is gonna actually? How much is it gonna be in actual dollars? You know, per resident or homeowner. It's gonna be about a hundred and three dollars more than what they paid in two thousand twenty-two. I did the math. It's right here on the on the. That's what you know based on the new assessed value of average of. Whatever, three forty, three twenty, two twenty. So we're gonna pay roughly one hundred dollars more. Right. If we would have kept it the same, it would have been one hundred and sixty-two dollars more. Since it went down to three point nine nine, it went uh, on average one hundred and three dollars is what they'll pay, which is a fifty-nine dollar reduction. And so this is gonna cause a surplus in the amount of money that the city is gonna be taking in this year as far as adding to, to different projects in the budget that we have now? The budget that's actually being proposed currently and what we'll see posted for the workshop on August 4th is going to show a deficit of approximately $30,000. And the reason that is, is because there's, there's a couple things. One, we haven't received all the revenues that are going to be provided by the state yet. Communication service tax revenue hasn't come out yet, which May in itself, uh, because what we are doing is we're holding, we have a number that's holding. We believe it's going to be greater than that number. Number two, we have insurance policies and premiums that we have estimated an increase for of 15%. Uh, we don't expect it to be that high. So we expect that eventually when it's all said and done, we should have a, we will have, not should, we will have a balanced budget. We will have a balance, a, and when I say a balance, I'm defining a balanced budget, which is not the true definition of a balanced budget, but by what most people consider revenues will equal or surpa surp surpass our expenses. So we believe that this uh, this, um, money that's going to be taken in because of this millage, increased millage, this is going to help the budget, or is this going to give us a surplus? in order to address 
additional projects. Angel, I think I think what you're asking is so, or, or the way to think about it is, is that um, the the commission has already voted to trim down this millage piece because they saw that surplus developing and felt like it was better to give it back to the taxpayers. When I, I can't that was that was their that was their objective is to give mo some money back to the taxpayer, but I understand that we're paying an additional hundred, not getting anything less. You're saying that we yeah, you're just you're just not paying as much additional, correct? As, so as far as the, we have yeah. we have an emergency surplus, emergency reserve that's healthy. Um, we've you know we've we've continuously maintained it for years now, and we believe that's healthy. And at the same time, we have an unfunded, unrestricted fund balance that's very healthy as well, which is what's helping us do a lot of these capital projects moving forward, which we'll discuss in a very short while. So, you know, we feel confident that the surplus amount that we have and we'll, what we're going to be maintaining is healthy. But Angel, you're right. There's no, there is no reduction in what we're paying. I mean, you know, so the, our, the tax assist values are our properties have all gone up so much. Uh, that you know, kind of generalizing it across the board, you're still going to pay higher taxes even with the lower millage applied to it. Uh, and so the commissioners were just trying to dampen that hit because uh, if they left it alone, you know, you'd be paying $162 more for all the services we have. Instead, now they're projecting that we would pay we'd pay about $100 more, 103. Okay, since I brought up this subject, I just want to say that um, uh, for me, uh, 103 to 162 is not a whole lot. I, it, if it had been up to me, I would have just left it the same at 4.3. Me, me too, 4. Danny. You know, Danny, I, I feel the same as you. I, I, I think that this strikes me as more, uh, more a show move than it does a yeah. practical savings. And so I think our city's in good financial shape. So I understand it, but it would seem to me as we're, especially as, and we haven't talked about this in detail yet, but as we look at some of the capital improvement projects that are uh, out there, um, it strikes me that savings, you know, keeping that money in the system, if you will, might've been the better move. Agreed. I agree with that too. I think that we have some things, some projects that we can, yeah. you know, addressing with some of that money. And, yes. Yeah. I, I, have, I have one specific project, but that's another story for another time. <laughs> so Alfredo, that's a fair way to look so at it, right? It may, it may not be what you agree with, but it is a fair way to look at it. Who, me? Oh, me? I mean, the, what we were saying is, you know, have we not done the, re, have they not approved the reduction? We would have had some money to get a head start on paying for some of these capital improvement projects, which I understand you probably get to amortize over a longer period of time because of what they are, right? Yeah, if we didn't reduce it and we had a greater surplus, um, there's there's multiple ways you can, you know, just like your home, you know what I mean? You could either spend right. it or save more of it. And, right. you know, get in, uh, yeah. so yes, I mean, you know, it's not really for me something to agree or not. I'm, I, 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 I understand. Up, I, you know, yeah, yeah. I just I, meant we're looking at it a reason, what we're suggesting. Oh. Without a doubt. I mean, there would be, yeah. I think there'll be a, a, a number of people that are probably had the same thought process that you guys have. There's no doubt in my mind about that. <laughs> I, I agree. But, you know what I mean? And that's just the truth. I mean, I've heard it. There's a reason why I started off my conversation saying I've had to explain this to a few people already. It's because they've been like, well, okay, let's raise it. And I'm like, well, uh, you can. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I am going to tell you it is it is unprecedented to say the least, not in South Miami, but in the entire county or state. Yeah. yeah. But, it's, but it seems like it seems like our suggestions are a moot point. You know, <laughs> it, that, I mean, that's, it's done already, you know. So what was the, what's the value Angel, I look at I look at this way, Angels. We may, may not be able to stop it this time through, but at least everyone can sort of understand what we thought about it fiscally. Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> at least that. And that's why I think, and that was, I think, and again, I don't want to speak for Steve Kaye. I don't need to or anything, but I think in speaking, when I spec, that's the sense I got from him as well. He's like, well, you know, 
there's a couple projects that are you know out there that we could probably have spent and you know and, and paid for and would have been bigger bang for the buck in other words it would have provided you it would have provided a, a better service or a better good than the sixty dollars that many people obviously they just some people just don't yeah, six for sixty dollars not worth it you know what i mean that's what they're yeah. but there's yeah. there's gonna be a few out there that are be like sixty dollars that's a like groceries for the month or gas for the week you know and that's Correct. very important as well yeah so you know again we provide the facts <laughs> with you uh, yeah and when we come to the, the discussion of the actual recommendations, it's going to be interesting what the wording that you, you as a committee choose, and I will put it together and then make sure that everybody, that I understood it correctly. That's all. So with that said, so you saw what the differences are between 4.3. You saw the differences at a 3.99. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and move on from that if it's okay with everybody. Yes. Okay. I don't know why that came up. Okay. So, all right. So. So then I am going to skip four for right now and just bring up the CIP if it's okay with you. Yes, please. Offer that. Of course. And we're going to just go over it. I know there's a few projects that, because you've already mentioned some key words in the discussions. I don't think anybody, and um, you could see it up on your screen already, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, perfect. So... Ja Jackie, I appreciate. Thanks. I, if I am saying something incorrectly, I will be turning to you because Jackie is the one that works with our CIP team and the city manager on putting together this fantastic CIP. So I'm going to just say a couple things. The source, and if you have any questions, don't worry about the acronyms. This is PTP, People's Transportation. I can, if you have any questions along the way, we can discuss those. This is what was budgeted for fiscal year 22 that we're currently in right now. This is what they're expecting expected to use and that's important because you'll see some funding from some other projects and you know, some people will be like well we funded that this year yeah well we never got to it for x you know there's multiple reasons we couldn't get clearance from environmental you know so on and so forth so that's why you see the funding again so this is this year this is what they expect to use of this year's money there's some there may be some projects that they put on to the queue now because they didn't do this project so we add that column in there and then you have what the green line and the green line is actually what is actually being proposed for next year. With that said, traffic calming. We're doing traffic calming at multiple traffic circles at multiple intersections. Now, when I say traffic calming, it's a, you know, it's a delicate, we have to work with Miami-Dade County. We cannot just put a speed hump or a circle wherever we want. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a team effort. And sometimes the county comes back and says, no, you need concurrency. You need approval by the homeowners that are abutting this traffic circle. And then sometimes we don't get it. So, you know, it's, uh, but we work towards it and we budget for it and then we continue. Uh, I'm assuming this is design that they did for this year. And then what you see budgeted here is the actual construction of those. So you see, we have five locations, humps. The designs have to go to Miami-Dade County and get approved, like I just mentioned to you. And again, working with them on certain projects, trust me, can be extremely challenging. We sometimes start off with six and end up with just one. So um, stop me if, as I, if I'm speaking too fast or you want me to elaborate on something or Jackie to elaborate on something, just let me know and we'll stop. No, I think it's good. Roadways. So these are the ARPA. ARPA is fantastic. ARPA is the money that we got from the federal government that they gave to all municipalities, depending on the size of your municipality. We got, stop me if I'm wrong, Jackie, 5 million? We've received 3 million so far. We're getting almost six. In total. Okay. So we get another installment of $3 million, uh next year. So we're using those projects. They're very, not, well, let me not say very specific. There are some specific usage for that money, and we're using them a lot for our infrastructure on stormwater, flooding, on areas that we have uh, flooding. So, and you can see that's where some of the monies were used here. Um, these are the projects, drainage improvement on Sunset Drive and 61 Court. Um, and these have been identified by our CIP, either from residents that have complained or safety issues that have been provided to us by either police or parking or CIP themselves. How about Lake Food Spot on Red Road? Say that one more time. I said, how about Lake <laughs> Food Spot on Red Road? Why, it gets really bad? Oh yeah. Are you kidding me? Red Road, right where Food Spot across, you know, from the Chevron, Kitty Corner from that Chevron, that the left turn lane northbound is usually uh, becomes very dangerous because the entire southbound lane is underwater. 
that's a county road and doing dealing with the county. I knew we, you were going to say that. I knew it. <laughs> and listen, listen, I will bring your concern. I promise you. I'm almost certain I've already heard this before. I will bring this to their attention again in front of, I know exactly what you're talking about right before you hit, you know, all those, uh, the, the schools that are all along and the, and the Dante Facel. Um, right, right, right after you leave the heart of downtown South Miami. We'll yeah. just, you know, we'll put a sign, just let them know we're about to put a sign that says Lake Regalado on there. <laughs> So listen, I will bring it. I will tell you that, you know, we've had partnership projects with them. It's very rare and few in between. The one that was right on Sunset, and that was a project between us, Coral Gables, because that corner is Coral Gables, unincorporated, and us. Yeah. Um, and that took about three years. That was my first three years here at the city was trying to get that project uh, launched. Um, I, will, I will bring it up to their attention. You may even get a call from our CIP or from our city manager specifically on that project. Okay. I don't have much more data than that. And That's fine. All I have, I guess, is an excuse. That's all I got. I mean, <laughs> sorry. All right. So those are the drainage projects. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to make sure I send an email about that right after we, we finish this meeting. So roadway infrastructure, <laughs> intermodal transportation plan, mobility. We have a mobility plan, a, a study that was done. We take from those that study and we do projects. Um, it may be a bike path, might new sidewalks. It's a it's a it's a it's a, a cafeteria style type stuff. Uh, whatever they're doing this year, it's a big plan. Um, city sidewalk repairs. You know, we always constantly put on there. That's something that we always regularly put because because of the trees growth of trees, we're constantly repairing, which is beautiful. But they sometimes they uproot the sidewalks, so we're always uh, maintaining them. Alfredo, what about city sidewalks new? Is there is that coming later in this, or are we not? Have we decided to postpone that? Which city which city sidewalk are we doing? We're doing a new sidewalk. No, that's what I was asking. So, for instance, it, are, are we continuing to expand our sidewalk network? Uh, and if so, where are we planning to go, or is that not on the table? If it is on the table, it's going to be part of this transportation mobility plan. Okay. I don't have, I don't know exactly the details of the project. I am not sure if Jackie, do you know the details of these projects specifically? No, but, that would public works. Right. That would be either city manager or, or Aurelio. Aurelio is our, pro, our CIP manager. Um, I've seen where when they're doing roadway resurfacing or they're doing, they're coupling it with this mobility amount that you see here and they're expanding right. the bike paths and sidewalk both. Right. But I, I just, could I'm ask. curious because it seems I, I would love to see it or or have let, have them present to us at some point or whatever uh, because it seems somewhat random right now <laughs> and I know you're right they're tying it in with the road work uh, it's a curiosity yeah I'll I'll make sure I'll make sure I'll, I'll I'll get that information to you so then again road resurfacing different roads always constantly having to be maintained. PTP is designated. People's transportation is to have penny sales tax, which we receive. And that's what we've kind of allocated it for road resurfacing type projects. Got for it. that and for the, I don't know if you, if you use freebie, if you ever use freebie, we also use PTP to heavily fund that. Freebie is fantastic. I um, did it been, once last week. Did you? Okay, so good for you. All right, so it's being utilized. Um, yep. I, I, I mean, it's a lot better when we do the door-to-door -door service than what we had that circulator that nobody used, so. Right. All right, so let's go to parks now. Park improvements, this was, this was a major discussion. I think Jackie will agree when we we're having the budget workshop. And the major one I think that was discussed is not even on my thing here, okay. Well, it was South Miami Park and you mentioned it earlier today, I think, Jay Miller. Um, yeah. We do 50,000 miscellaneous improvements. If we have to replace a, 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 a playground structure, which are super expensive. We also have a master plan, just like we have an intermodal plan. And that master plan, we take projects from it. We're constantly updating it, trying to do all those projects. ADA transition. Those are also things that we have to do, get our parks ADA compliant so that make sure that we don't in any which way run into any issues and people, all people can use the park. Um, again, our federal monies, we're using $100,000 for tennis court resurfacing, which is an allowable expense. Dante Facel building, construction, design and construction. 
Um, that's 1.5. Dante Facel, you know that little place where they do the tennis? They're planning to redo that whole thing and have, I think, even like a little store and everything with new bathrooms, new showers. It's a whole big, big uh, improvement for that park. That that little shed structure where our offices are and where people register and all that stuff, it's it's old. And it and I think it's outserved its purpose. I think now what they're looking for is the, the stuff that you see at some of these other tennis places, which is like elaborate with a sitting room and a place to gather and drink a coffee and stuff like that as well. Okay. It's more like a social event now. Um, artificial, there's nothing. Here we go. ARPA Fuchs Park, a new pathway lighting project. If you've seen it, we did a major improvement at Fuchs Park. It's beautiful. A walk a path that people utilize to walk around the lake. They're going to be putting a pavilion and they're going to be putting some up lights so that you can walk at night as well. And it looks pretty. You can see it from US1. It's that's where we have the beautiful entrance um, also. Uh, replace ball field fencing. Uh, this is the one, South Miami uh, restroom with concession stand construction. They're using ARPA monies for that. Um, there was 3 million because there was 1 million. Okay, so then this is, the, this is the one that had a lot of talk. There was 1 million being proposed here and we reallocated it to 2024. And this was for new artificial turf because that's heavily used for soccer. Um, I think Steve Kaya, one of the things Steve Kaya is going to be recommending, I think, no, I know because I'll be doing the recommendation on his behalf. He's going to be recommending that funding be allocated for South Miami Park um, some way so that we can get this, this, you know, this field, which is heavily used by residents and non-residents alike and make it look like the first class parks like all our other parks are looking. So, so for, whatever, for whatever it's worth, uh, this strikes me as a lot of money for a park that is surrounded by a lot of people who don't live in South Miami. Uh, and so, and if you look at all the budget, you know, conversations we've had over the weeks and weeks here, uh, this strikes me as this huge rounding number. Uh, and, you know, so to me, I would personally not, I mean, I would not recommend it unless you had some detailed budget and some comparative bids. You know, I think there's got to be a process to this, but to say, hey, let's approve 3 million. I think they were looking at four originally. Uh, and I just think that's, I, I, that would be irresponsible for us to, to approve a big chunk like that without knowing how many are our residents using the thing? How many are not our residents using it? How many, you know, what's our proposal for dealing with non-resident usage? You know, from AstroTurf standpoint, is that really, you know, I know people would love to have AstroTurf, it looks cooler, but it also, it's artificial. It strikes me as being counter what South Miami stands for. I don't wanna get, I'll get off my soapbox. I, I'm not, I, I'm not gonna be the guy that stands up and asks for that, I can tell you that. And I'm probably not gonna be the guy that's quiet when somebody else does. FYI. <laughs> well, well, there you go. That's that's so there's three million for next year. There's nothing planned for this year for that project. Um miscellaneous park furnitures. I know that's trash cans. Uh they do some nice, we're doing some nice decorative uh benches located over in uh in Dante Facel. Um I think um, uh, um, excuse me, Alfredo. I, I, yeah. have, I have kind of a shaky internet connection here. But did you, did you just say something about the Robert Welsh Park? Did no, you... I haven't got in there yet. Not yet. Okay, okay. okay. So, okay, go ahead. Uh, so, fully inclusive playground components. Uh, ARPA, we're using that. Um, South Miami Park. They, they are going to be putting a picnic facility, design and construction. And they're going to be doing a splash pad for $100,000 at South Miami Park. So, they are doing that. And I think the discussion at the workshop, and Jackie, tell me if I'm wrong because you were there with me. Uh, was like, hey, we're already putting a lot of money in this park this year. If you look at it, let's leave some projects for next year um, and see where we are. See where the, you know, they don't want to put that much more money into that park for some of the same reasons you mentioned right now. No different. Am I right, Jackie? Is that fair enough? Yes. So now, I'm, I'm sorry. Can I just say something? Yeah, of course. Are we making suggestions for some of these pro projects? Is that what we're doing here? You're listening, to, just, 
you're listening to um, so the CIP that was sort of I'm going over like the CIP workshop and any suggestions that you feel like making, this would be the time to make it. Okay, because I do have a suggestion. You know, I think that at Bethel Gibson Park, for instance, okay. I think that the kids who are living in that area who that park was built for are being underserved there. Um, I know that still the pool um, is not being utilized by the kids who live in the neighborhood. During the summertime, I know when I was growing up, I would love to have had a pool right there where I could go and swim, especially being this far away from the beach. Um, some of the money that we're talking about here for some of these projects, you know, is a, a whole lot more than it would take to implement a program over at Bethel Gibson Park to make a swimming program for some of the kids who live there in the neighborhood, teaching them how to swim and giving them an opportunity to go in there to swim in a pool without charging them. And I also believe that in that facility there, the, um, the recreation center, they don't have anything for the kids there. The only thing they have there is for basketball and the basketball courts are being utilized mostly by other people who coming into the neighborhood with you know basketball program, they have open court very seldom there. The weight room in the upstairs part is being used by the adults, of course. But I think what we can do to really stir the community there is to put a recreation room, to put some pool tables or some um, you know what do they call it the paddle ball. I forgot what they call ping pong. The ping pong tables to give the kids a a meeting place during the summertime to get them out of the hot sun, get them inside there doing something constructive where, you know, they could be watched over and they could be, you know, they, they, they can do something that, that's productive. And I just think that, you know, we, we could take a minimal amount of some of these projects and, and implement something like that, the Bethel Gibson Park, which would be very helpful to that community. I think that's, I think that's, I mean, I, I did an ex excellent recommendation. Um, I'm, I'm not really geared up right now to speak about, I know that I, I use that facility. I go there all the time and I love that community center. I mean, I really do. Um, it's fantastic. I do understand what you're saying and you're right. There are some adult leagues that are playing. Matter of fact, I think they're playing tonight and tomorrow night. Um, that, that facility is constantly being used and I agree. Um, uh, I don't know about the scheduling and how that would work. That's something that definitely Pew would be able to. Can I have Pew reach out to you tomorrow? Absolutely. I okay. know that there's an open room that we use for community meetings periodically. Yeah. Pretty, pretty large size opening room. When you walk in, you take that right turn, right? Yeah. When you first walk in the door. I think that they can, you know, buy some ping pong tables or some pool tables or something. Get the kids a place to go in there. Um, to be able to get out the hot sun during the summertime, the, the meet and congregate there. Um, I just think that that would, and also the swimming program. I, you know, I, I'm big on having kids learn to swim at a young age because I know that usually if you don't learn to swim at a young age, you don't learn to swim. You, 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 know, you go the rest of your life not knowing how to swim. And it's a dangerous thing when we live around so much water. And so... Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be a great program to, to, you know, get something going where we could get the kids learning to swim and coming here to swim and enjoying it. I, I definitely agree. No, I absolutely agree with you. Um, I'm going to have Pew call you tomorrow and see so he can give you more details of how it's being utilized. I mean, I, I, I'll tell you, that pool now in the summer that it just opened because it's only open for six months out of the year in the summertime. And man, there are so many people in that pool right now. Um, I drive by there always during lunch and stuff, and it's incredible how many kids are up there. Um, but yeah, he could tell you about it. I know that we have a we have a contractor that actually does teach a pool, uh, teach people in the pool uh, to swim in the pool, and I believe there's certain amount of free spots, and I don't think he's filling those free spots. He's just not he's not filling them. He's trying. And, you know, they're sending out flyers and stuff, but I'll let Pew explain to you exactly. And then we can come back and circle back and see what recommendations is good. Is that okay? Yeah. Because a ping pong table, that may be an actually excellent idea just because those things fold up and you can just put them against the wall in the back when you're having exactly. a meeting. Yeah. So that, that may not be, that may, I know that they're also starting in his budget. I think he's starting and Jackie, you can tell me if I'm wrong. They're starting also, or they did start last year 
um, one of those ex gamers, you know, the people that are doing e esports like on on video games. So they're, yeah. they're trying to start that as well, right? Am I right, Jackie? Yes. Yeah. Um, let him. I'm gonna let him call you tomorrow and give you some some information, and you can ask him all the questions, and then me and you will circle back to discuss uh, some recommendations if that's okay. Sure. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. That's good. good. Um. So I'm I'm gonna move on, but before I do that, I'm going to mention. I wasn't going to mention, but I am going to mention Welsh Park. Is that okay? Yes. Sure. Danny, you good? I'm good. There is nothing budgeted for next year. However, that project was just issued a purchase order or, or is going to be issued a purchase order today to start the actual construction of that park. That park has already been designed, I think, twice because the first design, some of the people didn't like it. So they redesigned it. And now they actually approved the actual contractor to do the construction. Alfredo, is this, is this what we're talking about here on this list? Yeah, you see it here, no, number I'm sixty. I'm sorry, but it's okay, not funded. It. It's not oh, funded, yeah. but he mentioned yeah. it, so I wanted to. Yeah. So we're okay. doing the project this year. This year they're going to break ground. I think it's going to be an, I want to say eight months project, eight months of construction, but it's all being funded with this year's funds. And and it's going to be done this year though. The basketball court and the other amenities. Where that is this correct. going? Where is this park? <laughs> it's right next to uh, Ludlam Elementary uh, School, just south of it, on the canal. Tucked okay. away behind it. Yeah. You don't see it off Sunset Drive, but if you make a right on 72, I guess it is, right? Mm -hmm. it would be 67. 67. 67, sorry. 67, right, yes. You make a right on 67th, and then right as you pass the school, you look to your left, you'll see a big empty lot. It was sold to us by a homeowner. And when we bought it from that homeowner, we made it, we were going to make it a park. It was going to be a park for that area. Okay. Just that, curious. That, that land was bought cash. We bought that uh, two, two fiscal years, and it's been in the works. Uh, it was... It's been in the works. I mean, the person that actually, the reason they're calling it Robert Welsh Jr. Park is because he was he was one of the ones that pioneered getting that property. And it just so happened he passed away before seeing it actually constructed. Okay. Right, am I good then? Do I keep going? Yes, yes please. Yeah, that's, yep. that's, that's good. Okay, so fleet replacement. Um, you know, fleet replacement is something that we just had a meeting about this morning. It's, you know, just like everybody in the public is having a hard time uh, finding cars. Uh, try looking for a police pursuit vehicle. Um, not easy, let me tell you. So we're working through that. We have, we always, our fleet replacement policy is about eight cars, eight pursuit vehicles a year. We haven't been able to order one yet. And we've been hounding everybody that's on the Florida Sheriff's bid, which is a, a specific group of uh, individuals that are pre-approved by the Florida Sheriff's Association. And uh, man, it's it's like pulling teeth. We, we can't get anything. So, I mean, we were even talking about changing the fleet to Tahoe's, you know, some people up Florida FHP and some, we don't want to do that because it's, it's an overkill for the cities that we have. But so, you know, we can't, we're, we're looking for vehicles. We're looking for multiple different avenues of how we're going to get vehicles. We're trying everything possible. We have the funding. It's not a matter of funding now. It's a matter of people providing it to us. So anyway, it's challenging. We, um, we have a bucket truck. We use that a lot for all of our events, especially for anything that's obviously a bucket truck is used for anything that's high up, like our clock tower and stuff like that. Uh, a van for uh, for parks and recreation to transport the kids in the after school program. We go around multiple schools and pick up kids and bring them to our after school program, which is a phenomenal program. Uh, pickup truck, trash truck, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. It's just fleet replacements, trying to keep our fleet looking good and uh, operational. Silver Martin, uh, we need a new roof at Silver Martin, which is that old building right in front of the Coral Rock building in front of City Hall. Uh, Head Start, new roof as well. Head Start is uh, that on the cul-de-sac that we own that property, but we contract with the Head Start program to provide uh, children with early education for free. Uh, police department garage, new roof. Uh, I mean, it's a lot, you can see a lot of 
air conditioner replacement at Silver Martin, our garage, our garage, pressure cleaning. We keep putting pressure cleaning in there because we're going to continuously need to pressure clean at least once a year just to main, maintain it looking good. Uh, striping, we're putting 10,000. It's a little, it costs a lot more to restripe the whole thing, but there are going to be areas where probably we're going to have to restripe. It's not, you can't use on concrete the thermals. You have to use paint and paint with tires rolling on top of them. But we may be able to skip. If we can skip a year, we will, but we have to budget for it just in case. It all depends on utilization, how many people are, are using the garage. We're hoping a lot. Hey, Alfredo. Uh, security cameras. Alfredo, sorry to interrupt. But yeah. So some of these things don't strike me as capital improvement. Uh, I mean, pressure cleaning, you know, that's to me, that's an expense. I'm, I'm not sure why. I mean, unless you're just trying to give us sort of an all in cost of what the garage costs us. That's to pretty run. much what it is. Okay. Because I mean, that that's what it is. We're trying to. We're trying to put it all under one one umbrella. One, it's all our city facilities, so we try to throw it all in the CIP. But I see what you're saying, like you know, striping. It's not capex. You know, we're we're not going to depreciate it at the end of the year. Absolutely not. Yeah, I mean, you know, security cameras, emergency blue buttons, repairs, charging stations, maybe because they cost so damn much. Um, anyway, yeah, we capitalize those charging stations. It just seems like it belongs so like we've pulled out i'm not sure which of the budgets we've looked at i guess this will be the general maintenance budget but it seems like we've got some things pulled out in here that ought to be over there anyway just an observation no no i i see what you're saying um yeah i mean again pressure cleaning striping like for example structure and joints we will depreciate that that'll add to the years of service of the of the structure so that'll yeah. be an added expense yeah so I mean, if you so, let the tax code be your guide yeah that's what we kind of we kind of use those thresholds the cameras each camera is approximately uh, i want to say of fifteen hundred dollars which we will capitalize as well as one big system because then after six years we're gonna have to tear it out and do a whole new system especially the Got way it. technology is changing so Got it. Um, uh, uh, 500,000 tank replacement. We have a huge fuel. We have two fuel tanks over at Public Works. We have a regular gas, and then we have a diesel tank. That's where we fuel up all our vehicles. Um, they've, they've reached their useful life, and now we have to replace them. And this is something of a derm, because if it starts to seep into the ground, it becomes a bigger problem. So after a certain number of years, good or not good, we have to replace them. And we're at that stage already. All right, miscellaneous. And then this is the last category, just so you can see. I'm going to just scroll down. Okay, so just to go over some of the ones, directional street sign replacements. Again, you would probably you would probably put this also as a maintenance because it's, it's not installation of new road directional signs. This is basically whenever a car hits it and leaves or a truck hits it and, and damages it, we have to replace it. Um, that's why we have it. We have it. Those things are expensive. They're like, I think each one is about... Two thousand five hundred, three thousand dollars. So we we change out a few. If we can catch the person, fantastic. Their insurance pays for it. But if we can't, because it happened at three in the morning and nobody ever saw it, it becomes a bit a bit of a challenge. Um, city landscaping program, twenty five thousand. A median improvement over on eighty fourth Street. Um, art, uh, Dante Facel, art in the park, sculptures. There's a hundred thousand dollars allocated to purchase new sculptures or if not purchase them, because sometimes we get them for free, as you know, or we at least we've received everyone to date for free. Um, sometimes there's major infrastructure that needs to be done to, to, uh, to put lights and stuff like that, make it look pretty. Uh, citywide striping, uh, signage for community rating system. This is a, uh, a program so that homeowners receive a discount on their insurance. It's our flood rating. So we do things, infrastructure improvements, to help address some of those and get us to the next level to provide our residents with greater savings on their premiums. Manor Lane culvert replacement design, that's a big project. Um, and then we have Sunset Drive between US 1 and 57, pedestrian lighting design. And we're getting to the end now. Um, holiday lighting, 25, you know, those, those are the lights that you see down Sunset Drive all the way to pretty much 57th. Everybody loves them. It looks like Christmas year round here in South Miami. That's what we say. It's a special time every day here. 
And then we go with downtown furniture. We're doing uh, our, our underlying beautification. Underlying beautification, you know, underlying is under the Metro Rail Line station. There's We're going to continue. There's a major underlying project going from all the way from City of Miami all the way down to past us, Dayland. And we're going to be adding into some of that uh, to make it pretty and make it unique to the city of South Miami. Downtown rebranding, uh, decorative lighting, and Marshall Williamson sculpture, multi-sensory family room. You got me on that one. Uh, you, Jackie? I, I don't know. I have no idea what that's for. <laughs> Marshall Williamson sculpture, I believe uh, they're doing something multi-sensory family room. I, 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 <laughs> I know that somebody asked it at the CIP and I know that Pew said it and I know I was, it was English and I know I was paying attention. I just don't recall what it was. Manor Lane, why I, I we kind of went through that fast. Why is it getting all this, uh, this treatment? Does it have a problem or is it deferred? Stormwater. Stormwater. Jackie, Jackie, you know any details on this or no? Is it not? A, it is. It's what we're having is a drainage issue over there. So since it's a drainage issue, um, Manor Lane culvert has to be replaced. It's not a matter of the question is how do we do it? Okay. And we're using the federal dollars that's given to us because it meets the it meets infrastructure requirements. Got it. That's a that was a, that was a that's a big project. I know that the manager makes that a priority because it has no choice but to actually replace. We have to do this project. With that, I've just recapped in I think fifteen minutes. I just want to ask a quick question. Yeah. Do, do, we have, do we have anything in a pipeline now for dealing with the, you know, the um, septic tank to sewer conversion? Is there anything no. in the pipeline with, you know, addressing that matter yet? Okay. So it's a yes and no. And I'll tell you what the yes is. The yes is we are actively pursuing and we are constantly seeking at the state level and federal level funding for that project. Our goal is to get all septic and people off of, uh, of well water into potable county water and onto the sewer system before, you know, I hear there's a lot of discussions of, you know, water intrusion and, uh, and if water intrusion, obviously the drain fields won't work properly and you're going to have to abandon it and it's better to be ahead of it. So yeah, it's a priority for the city without a doubt. The problem with that project is it's so costly. It is... It's uh, I don't know how to explain it. Like you can build 50 police stations, not a problem. But doing getting everybody on a gravity sewer line is cost prohibitive. I mean, we need assistance. And not only that, then we build it and then we have to dedicate it to Miami-Dade County because you know that we don't we don't own a water water or sewer plant. And they're the ones that are going to be putting customers online that they'll use to pay back or to make money. And we don't make money off that. We're doing it. We're trying to. We're trying to be proactive, and we're hoping that you know the county sees that, the state sees that, and the federal. But uh, funding is scarce everywhere. It's not you know. It's not just us. It's everybody's asking for those types of monies, and you know, and we get to the point where we get to the governor's desk, and sometimes we just you know he he has to balance the budget somehow, and he has that veto power. So who makes the call on? on who gets connected and who, I mean, so where are those projects? Is it a county call? We make recommendations that, you know, Manor Lane, as an example, needs to get off of septic as soon as possible. Uh, and who, how does that get prioritized? And the other, my other question, and we don't, I, you and I can take this offline. I'm curious out of how many homes that we have in South Miami, how many remain on septic and how many are on sewer? I don't have that number, I had it but I don't have it with me, but I'll get back to you on that number. Um, right. Who makes that call? It's a great question. We have, we paid, we, the city of South Miami paid for a master sewer plan. What does that mean? It identifies every property in the city that's on sewer or septic, and it identifies the, the, specifically which is the ones in priority in phase. And we share that with the county. We did, we did our study. We gave it to them and said, listen, this is a priority. And they're, they, they applauded. They were like, hey, excellent job, guys. Fantastic. Okay, we'll get to it when we get to it. It's like, well, you, you know, I mean, so, you know, we're working with them. We've done, we do, we try to do the best we can, but it's, you know, it's not like we can float 
a bond, a revenue bond, based on the revenue we're going to make off of this project that we're going to construct. They can. I can't do that because I don't make money off of it. I'm literally giving somebody. And um, so, yeah, it's a battle. Um, and I'm sure they can, you know, we're just one city. I'm sure that the other 35 cities are also asking Miami-Dade County to connect their residents also onto it, you know? That's what makes makes me think that a good idea would be to ask these guys to fund the soccer field with a revenue bond. I, I know the answer to that, by the way. No <laughs> way, no how. But I, I don't know what guaranteed revenue we're going to see. You know, when you put so one of the things, one of, there's a county law, and it says it. If you have, if I put a water line behind your pro, a budding your property in front, behind doesn't matter, abutting it, when I put a sewer line abutting your property the homeowner or property owner is required within 90 days to connect. If not, you're in violation. And the reason they do that is because of exactly that. It's the revenue bonds. It basically, they're using bonds to put in this infrastructure and they want repayment and they want to guarantee their repayment. So I don't know. I, I, you know There's, isn't there some dynamics? Uh, and again, I, we could take this as a separate conversation, but so if I'm in a long, my block runs essentially three blocks. And so if a house in the middle of those three blocks along my street builds new, I believe they require them to tie into the sewer line that's at the end of the street. And so in doing that, they end up running a sewer line from, let's say, a cross avenue down to this new house. And then everybody else gets to tie in. I don't know if they're paying separately for that or how that works. I know it's like you said, it's very expensive. They're, con they're, pay they're collecting from the homeowner on your behalf and they're sending you a check. It's not a free ride for anybody. Right. So if you're at the end of your block, which I know where you live, you are at the yeah. end of their block and everybody, yeah. yeah, they get the benefit of you dropping it. Well, guess what? They're going to be paying you pro rata their share back to you. Yeah. So they do I'm that. At, I mean, that's, that's yeah. an incentive for you, you know? Yeah. You may not be yeah. the most favorite 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 person on your neighborhood because you're basically forcing everybody to connect i say who told you that <laughs> <laughs> we're all Bye. connected we're connected i think that they force the builders to make the sewer line bigger to accommodate their new square footage and that's a constant that constantly happens sometimes what like when we did the, the, the pool when we did the pool they made us two miles up the road increase it from a six to an eight i believe or maybe a six right. to a ten to accommodate and if you want your project to go guess what you're gonna have to do it it's not like right. not. yep so yeah. yeah that's common that's a common you know making sure that everybody has the proper pressure yeah so anyway i digress yeah no the angel i think does that answer your question i want to say that we are actively pursuing it and trust me that everybody has it on their mind and everybody wants to get everybody connected as fast as possible before we have an emergency um yeah. Most of the people that I talk to around my neighborhood, that's one of the concerns. The other one is that the overhead power lines, I don't know how that would tie into what the city does or if FPL is responsible for that. But, you know, we have a big problem every time it's a hurricane, you know, everybody losing power around here because there's so many big trees, you know, but that's one of the beauties of our neighborhood, the big trees everyone has. But at the same time, you know, when a hurricane and not sometimes not even a hurricane, when it's just a, a regular thunderstorm, you know, we got to go without power for six to eight hours. And so no, I, 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 think, I think that's a project that, you know, we should be entertaining. I think the sewer project, septic project is number one need for this city. And I, I just backing up, uh, going back to like the millage rate, I, I wish, you know, instead of cutting the millage rate, we would be putting more money into a fund like going towards the eventual uh, connection to uh, the sewer line. But anyway. there, but I, you ha there's another side to that coin and that, that'll tell you where, where it is. You have other people that have paid a good amount of money in the house because they're on sewer and they don't want to contribute to that fund because they've already contributed to it. And nobody <laughs> paid for their sewer. So you also have that side. I'm not, I'm not saying that that's, that's but yeah, you, right. you, you know, you're going to use my tax dollars to help somebody get a sewer or water line. Get nobody helped when I bought my house, and you yeah, know. I hear you. So you, well, you have that. Yeah, I mean, I will be willing to pay part of the cost if I'm going to get subsidized also by you know, like you said, there's going to be federal funds coming in, or, yeah. or, or state funds coming in. I mean, I, I wouldn't expect to, you know, get a totally, um, 
you know, free, um, you know, totally free um, situation where they're gonna, you know, add me to the sewer line, um, to the county. But you know, if if I don't know how much it will cost per homeowner, but you know, listen, if if it's gonna, you know, if it's gonna be ten thousand dollars per homeowner to do it, and and someone's gonna subsidize us and, and give five thousand, we have to pay five thousand. You know, I think in a long term that would be a, a good long long term investment. Absolutely. So, I promise I that we're, we're actively pursuing. Trust me, that that is an issue, and we take it to to both every year. We've taken it up to Tallahassee, and we've taken it up to DC both times, and um, we're we're going to continue to do that. That we're there's no stopping us on that. It's just it's a it's a very delicate. And then yeah, once we do, let's just assume we get the line. You know you. You're going to have to pay the homeowner. We can't pay the impact fee, um, and then the connection costs. It's it still gets pricey, even if it's subsidized, 100. percent It's and it depends. You know how long the run is from the point of the you know where the connection is all the way to where your connection in your home. If your connection's in the front of the house, easy. If your connection is in the back of the house, it's going to be a more costly, more of a. I mean, mm. it just it brings in a lot of issues. There's a lot of. It's a great project. It's, I mean, and then on top of it all, whatever you're paying now, just triple it because that's what your water bill will be because now you're paying for sewer, which is very expensive as well. <laughs> yes, just reality. So Alfredo, what else do we need to cover here? And when do you need us next? This is what I would, I, are you ready to discuss? I can, I'm going to make, a, a, if it's okay with you, we can discuss what we want to see as part of recommendations. Recommendations have to have to be cutting or adding. It could be, we support this, you know, we, you know, we, how do we feel about that? I can, I can go over a few things. I have a, a sheet that I prepared bef before today's meeting just to go over a few things. And then from there, the committee can say, okay, whatever recommendations, it could be two, it could be 60. It doesn't, you know, there's no set number. If you want me to go over real quick. Okay. With me. Is yeah. that okay? This, I yeah. think this would give you, give the, the committee sort of a sense of, okay, we could discuss this or maybe we shouldn't, you know, it doesn't have to be all of it. It's just, you know, a couple things. Are you ready? Yes. If, yeah. if you give me, give me one second. I just realized I don't have a pen with me. Can you give me one second just so I can go and get a pen? Yeah. All right. One second. I apologize. All right, ready? Yes. Yep. Okay. So these are just some some budget highlights, and we can discuss. And again, you can make whatever recommendations you wish. Um, millage rate is number one on my list. Budget was prepared using the reduced millage rate of three point nine nine nine, of something that I think is you know that the committee may want to address, either maintain it or whatever. Uh, Single revenue greatest increase for this budget was you know $800,000 and that increase comes from parking and some of uh, the modifications between having a new parking garage and increasing the fee uh, for park hourly parking to what's comparable to cities next to us. We're still not the highest, right? Just, we're probably still the lowest. Cost of living increase 4.4. I already discussed, I'm not going to go into it. We you know, eliminated one po a police officer and a half. There was one full-time and one part-time police officer, one code officer, uh, increased a couple to full-times, replacing them with part-times. And the reason is, the logic is, because part-time people tend to stay for very short periods of time. So we spend the time in training them. They get to finally know where things are, and then they leave because they find a full-time position. So that's it's more of a, a lot of that as well. Um, City clerk's budget increase mostly because of an election that's in November now and the legal cost, there's, uh, there was an additional cost in legal and the reason that's is because if you're doing a general election like we're doing now in November, we're required to advertise everything in English, Spanish and Creole. That's not something we ever used to do before. That wasn't a requirement before, but now it is. Um, 
Contractual services city manager, there's a $15,000 addition for a social work contractor. Division of personnel, increase of insurance premiums, we should have by late August, September, sometimes we get it right in between first and second reading in September, what our premiums are finally gonna be, but you saw some increases there. Hopefully they come in less than what we, what we budgeted or proposed budgeting. Uh, reduction in parking line item. And one of those is because we reduced the warranty of our pay stations. And the reason is because our pay stations, we are looking to go pay by phone 100% and save on all those additional recurring operating costs of those ugly boxes that are uh, that we call multi-space parking meters. Um, I, IT budget, uh, licensing increases, nothing there. We increase procurement's budget by supplies for mostly for paper. The cost of paper has gone through the roof. Even though we try to maintain a paperless organization, it still requires paper. I mean, um, planning saw reduction because of, uh, we reduced uh, some of the planning contractual services and the SOMI rezoning. That was something that was discussed last year and is being fulfilled this year. Um, new garage parking operations. Again, uh, building maintenance has increased for related cost to utilities, because now we have a new building that we must pay electricity and water for. Motor pool, one of the other things that all, and it's all departments that have vehicles, they've gotten slaughtered with fuel. That's something that our police, matter of fact, and I told you we met this morning and talking about fleet. Uh, we're talking about maybe Mustang has been certified uh, as a, uh, the electric uh, Mustang has been certified as pursuit so there's discussion. I mean, we're trying to get pricing on them now. And that may be an option to help us, at least in the future, save on some of these fluctuations and increases in fuel. So that may be something that the committee may want to talk about. But uh, going electric, I believe, is where everything is moving. Maybe, you know, there. I read somewhere, I want to say it was in the New York Post, Washington Times, one of those. It could have been Business Weekly. And uh, they were saying by 2030, they're anticipating that 50% of sales will be traditional combustion and 50% will be electric by 2030. Um, another thing for police, one of the big projects that they have coming up this year and, and increased their budget was the increase in storage and uh, maintenance of that new system that they're looking to implement inside of each police car. The uh, the 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 forfeiture is going to be paying for the actual infrastructure of that program, but the storage and the maintenance of it is going to be is built into their operating expenses. Seven thousand dollars for cheerleading uniforms. Every so often, you have to get them because they're already you know deteriorating. And last but not least, landscaping division again fuel uh, increased it. Um, that's pretty much a summary of some of the major changes that have occurred uh, between twenty twenty two and. 2023. With that said, I leave it up to you. I know that Kaya is going to be asking, and this is something for you guys to consider. Uh, he's going to be asking that three that we maintain or the commission maintain and uh, support maintaining it at 3.99 throughout the uh, second, first and second reading and adopting that millage. He's being That's generous. Right. Yeah. <laughs> He's being, I, I, the only reason I wouldn't support Steve's comments is that's given him one. You know, I think the, other's I, not on, the other nine, so, uh, here, just yeah, hear me out, Alfredo. Yeah. The, the other uh, is not there yet, right? I mean, he's sort of projecting what he thinks they're going to do. Uh, but to me, that's still him saying he's good with 3.99. I don't know if that's the, I don't know if that's the view of the city, of, of this group. If it is, no, uh, you know. I think the general, I think we, the three of us here seem to agree that we were all in favor of the 4.3 or whatever it was. The unchanged yeah, I mean, village rate. Yeah, Alfredo, what I, what I would, what I, this is just, this is just me and you know, I, you guys can decide. And I realize we have a chance to speak at this thing as public citizens, right? As citizens yep. of South Miami. Of course. But the millage, the millage reduction to me seems ill-timed at the very least since the budget has not been finalized or approved. 
And so it strikes me as odd. You can choose whatever language you want. You maybe right. say it strikes us as odd. Got if, it. If Danny and, and we're all on the same page. Yes. Uh, and, and the uh, the other part that bothers me is the CIP budget, in my opinion, could use some additional detail, particularly for larger products, uh, projects, I'm sorry. And, and to Angel's point, I think some consideration needs to be put out there for what are the communities that these projects are serving. And that's a geographical question and a utilization question. And so I was just looking at a map of our soccer field we're talking about here, you know, which is a, a staggering price for our town to spend on this thing, in my opinion. Uh, it, that where it sits, it's adjacent to two South Miami homes. That's it. The rest is surrounded by unincorporated Miami Dade. It sits at the farthest furthest north point in our South Miami world. So I really question whether this is a South Miami project or not something that is benefiting, you know, a group of neighbors who figured out this is a good way to lobby it. And so, you know, to Angel's point, you know, here you are just off of 64th Street with an aquatic center that seems to be underutilized and not as much thought put around programming uh, so that folks can learn to swim that might not otherwise have a chance to do it. I, I that that just strikes to me as sort of a entitled versus not. Yeah, I I don't like it. So uh, you know, however you would choose the word that, I think there needs to be more detail around uh, those capital improvement numbers, and there needs to be greater thought and discussion around the communities they're going to serve based on where they are and who's who's going to utilize them. So more Danny? detail, more detail, more detail in the CIP projects. For sure. Uh, and I'd say, you know, the CIP, the, the, I don't know how you term this exactly, but the CIP projects that are for non-essential non things, I mean, I'm sure a soccer player would argue a soccer field is essential and it's great for kids and the athletics. So I don't want you to think I'm anti-athletic. And I do coincidentally happen to love pools. So I, that's a that's a coincidence, though. Uh, I don't think that pool, that's a whole separate rat hole. But um, I think there needs to be certainly a lot more detail around projects that are like the haves as opposed to a sewer. I, I want detail on that, too. But you know what I mean? The, the sewer project, we know the costs there. The county tells us what they are every damn day or every time we try to hook up. So how are you word that much more delicately than I just said it? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna work. So so let me just recap some of two two of those what we discussed right now. Finalize the draft odd before seeing the budget at and then should have kept at four point three. Maintain the four point three going into the hearings at least. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Because then after after you after you you advertise the trim. Yeah. You can always reduce it. I said it from the beginning. You can reduce it. Yeah. They can go to 1.4. It wouldn't be a problem. It's only when you go, when trying to increase it becomes there, obviously. And then more detail on the CIP projects, especially on the major projects. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I would actually, I would add one, I would add a, a very positive comment. Again, this, uh, if others feel the same way, I've been very impressed with the department heads grasp of their budget and their needs and their asks and their discipline around it and their discipline around adhering to prior budgets so i that to me that's been pretty impressive i agree let me just say a couple of things here um first about the pool there are swimming lessons going on there and yeah i i um i occasionally go swimming go swim laps at the pool and it's, it's really it's never I haven't been there for about a month, actually, but uh, it's never been a problem getting in there to, to swim laps. Um, but th there are there are there are learn to swim programs there. Let me just say that about South Miami Park, what Jay was saying. I agree. I, I'm not too crazy about the astroturf either. Uh, and, it, and it's a whole lot of three million dollars is a big wad of cash to throw out there. And and. I lost. We lost the last thing you said. I'm so sorry. 
No, I, was, I know my internet is terrible. I'm missing a lot of things here. I don't know what's going on here with my Wi-Fi, but um, no, I was just saying that that I, I don't like the AstroTurf either for for, for uh, South Miami Park, you know. And, okay. and, that, and that 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 amount of money allotted to to South Miami Park is like wow. When you say hey, AstroTurf, you're talking about the artificial turf, right? The artificial, yeah. Whatever, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ar no, no, it's fine. That's fine. I just want to make sure artificial turf. Not a fan. Got it. Not not. Is that is that is that a fair statement for everybody, the committee members? I, I, I think it's so. So let me just head off. I know what will be one of the responses from some, which is having artificial turf reduces injuries, and lessens our liability for a park that gets heavily used. And there's probably a case to be made on that. I think it's just a staggering amount of money to spend on a park that uh, that may not really be serving. South Miami constituents to the degree everybody would have them believe. Um, I think that's a county. I think that's a county park. I'd give it to the damn county. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to listen. Trade, them, try to... trade sewer lines for park. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> All right. So no artificial turf and servicing the. Let, uh, okay, and servicing the county residents. Uh, have, I'd say serving, servicing potentially, and again, you could just put it in the term of what we would want, which would be to see much more information relative to the park utilization, the soccer field utilization between South Miami residents and non-South Miami residents and the economics of how we would get compensated for providing that facility. Knowing, knowing the utilization. Yeah, because I'm sure, I, I don't know if there's any rules on our tennis courts, but I'm assuming anybody can make a court time over there. Even there, there might be some priority to South Miami residents, I don't know. There's no priority. Whoever, whoever no. gets there first gets in. Yeah, so you know what? Make, make soccer look like that, boom, we're for AstroTurf. <laughs> I will say this on the, on the park, you made, you made a comment. I just wanna, I wanna just, for development, there's a requirement of concurrency. In other words, you have to have some green space. You have to have yeah. green space for development. So having that park helps us in allowing other development, even if it's in downtown, because we meet the green space requirements that we have the proper acreage for. for... All right, so let me, let me, I'm going to work on this. So I got, so, so far, tell me. Hold on a second. All right, so is AstroTurf still green space? I mean, it's green. <laughs> but is that green space? That's artificial as hell. Yeah, I, I, I always thought it was, but maybe you're right. I have no idea. Uh, uh, I think no the commission of five-year study to study the green space question. Then maybe those guys will forget about the park. <laughs> I'm going to say, so right now I got basic. I'm just going to kind of just uh, finalize the draft. Uh, it's odd before adopting a resolution, before seeing a proposed budget in draft, uh, should have kept it at 4.3, at least in the resolution, for, you know, at the setting of the trim. Okay, good. Uh, more detail in the CIP projects, especially on major projects. Department heads impressed knowledge, something to that effect. Nord official turf at South Miami Park. Um, and servicing county residents, knowing knowing the utilization is important in, in, by resident. I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, and I, I don't think it's no, no artificial turf. I just say, we want to understand the cost benefit trade-off of artificial Got it, got it. Turf. Artificial versus, got it, versus yeah, natural green, I guess you call it, right? Yeah. Trade-off. Trade-off, okay. Yeah. Something like that. Um, um okay um parking fee you're okay with you thought the parking fee adopting the parking fee is good helps us offset and reduce our millage um i mean i, I is there anything else i'm trying to think a social worker contract uh fifteen thousand. um i think you just wanted us to sort of have the highlight talking point talking points right yeah, something that I can I mean, use. The, thing, the things you really want them to think about. Yeah. Right, 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 right. And is there any more than the ones I have right now? 
Not that I can think of. No, me neither. I can't think of anything. I mean, if you, 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 might want, you might want to make a reference to Angel's comments that as a group, we would continue to like to see focus on the sewer connections and the, you know, sewer connections and the uh, underground ing of the FPNL lines. Yeah, I don't know, you know, how much the cost would be. I would think that it would be less than putting in, um, you know, converting from septic to sewer to put underground lines. Um, but, you know, I think that that's definitely a need here. I mean, we, we have a lot of, you know, we have a lot of situations throughout the summer, not just when a hurricane is on its way, but, you know, just so far this year, I, I've had three instances where my lights were turned off for, you know, six to eight hours and it had nothing to do with my house, but houses in the neighborhood. And, you know, I think that this is an ongoing you know, ongoing problem that, you know, at some point in time, we, we really need to address it. Okay. No, I'm going to put it in the, I'm going to put the, as a group, as a committee, as a committee, uh, definitely support sewer and underground FPNL line, something to that effect. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And anything we can do from a cost standpoint to help or revenue standpoint, whatever it is. Got it. So Alfredo, are we going to then circle back on Monday and kind of go through the draft? I yep. mean, if you're, maybe you can send us a draft during the course of the week. I will. And we can talk it through on Monday. I don't know. Steve is back by Monday. Do you know? He's not. He's going to be not. gone for two weeks. Okay. Um, obviously, I'll invite him in case. Maybe he's in a different place than he is now. I don't know exactly where he's vacationing. I know it's, it's, I know it's far, but, um, but I don't know until how long. So I'll invite him. But I'm I'm going to say he said he was going to be out for two weeks. Well, actually, you know what? If you if you send him a draft to the comments and just tell him to email you back, that's probably as efficient. Perfect. I actually, right. and I, I'm going to work on that first thing tomorrow. I'm hoping that tomorrow I'll have it completed for you in a draft cool. form for you guys to review. Okay. I'm going to set up another meeting 5:30 on Monday to go over it and if any any modifications before we make it final. Sounds good. Sounds Is great. That okay. Yep. yep, sounds good. All right, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for your time in this. And any questions you have, Angel, I'm going to have Pew call you tomorrow. Okay, appreciate it. Thanks my, a lot. No, my pleasure. I think your suggestions are great, but I think he may have that already, and I'm just not aware. I'm not aware of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I look forward to it. All right, Thank you. you got it. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for your time and your help. All right, See you later. Have a good night. Bye. See you all. Have a great night. Thank you, guys.